What's up, Brent from Brent Speed? Today is going to be cool because guess what? It's the 73 F100. It's finished. Hey, this is going to be a long video, but don't worry, I'll break it up. So in the beginning, I'm going to do my normal three, four minute video where I'm going to take a quick look at the Coyote Swap. We'll do a dyno pull, look at the numbers it makes. And then we're going to get this truck off the dyno. We're going to get in the shop and we're going to go over the full build. So it's going to be long. So you might want to crack a cold one and stick around. We'll go over the suspension the brakes, the fuel system, everything underneath the truck, everything we did, it's gonna be awesome. So hey, if you haven't, please subscribe and notify us safe to date. Let's get started. All right, so what's under the hood of the 73 F100? Well, it's a Coyote Swap. I have Doug with me, we're gonna take a closer look. Doug, if you don't mind walking over here, absolutely amazing engine compartment. This thing looks so cool. Gen 2 Coyote, Whipple supercharged. Now, remember, we're gonna bring this in the shop, go over a lot of details and everything we did. But from a drivetrain standpoint, automatic. So, 6R transmission, that's killer. So, the Gen 2 Coyote, fill of oil pump gears, cooling mods, all the same stuff we do to a Mustang. Of course, the Whipple Supercharger, we're running 93 octane pump gas and MS109. So, we have two different tunes. Right now, it has MS109 in it. That's what we're gonna watch on the dyno. I also dynoed it prior with 93 octane. I will show you those graphs, but that's it right there. 6R80 tranny, so you got the automatic. The inside of this truck is sweet. We're gonna take a look here in just a little bit. So like I said, stick around. But right now, let's watch a couple dyno pulls. Okay, the pull you just watched is on MS109. Doug, if you don't mind, come over here. We have 709 real horsepower. This is our dyno jet rated SAE, 93 octane, 643, peaking right around 7400. Down here on the torque, 554 on the MS109, 526 on the 93, peaking around 47, 4800 RPM, but at 3000, which we went under, just under 3000, went wide open throttle, we're over 500. Now, on a truck like this, let me tell you, I've driven it, that is stupid power. So we're gonna get off the dyno right now. I'm gonna bring George out. He designs all these builds, so we're gonna find out from him like a lot of the different parts that went on this. We're gonna bring Dom out. He built the truck, he did a great job. We're gonna bring him out, maybe ask him some questions. What was the hardest thing about it? Maybe what was the easiest things about it? And then we'll go over the entire truck. Hopefully answers a lot of your questions, so stick around. All right, I found George. I've been waiting about four hours. You know, he's the architect on this job. He's been on the phone all day. Finally, got him out here to go over the F100. Now here's the deal, this is a custom build. So I asked George, hey, can you go underneath the truck and kind of show what we did to this, all right? So this isn't necessarily a how-to video, but I wanted George to show you what we did to this. You know, a lot of people, when they talk about coyote swaps, they're like, hey, what's coyote swap, like $10,000? Well, not really, because this is a frame off, I guess I would call it. We this truck tore down to just the frame let me build it back up to the way it is right now, which turned out killer. So George, if you don't mind, just kind of walk everyone with Doug here underneath the truck, kind of show them what we did, give it some details as possible. And then when you're done, I'm gonna go get Dom. I wanna ask Dom who built the truck, kind of what was hard, what was easy, find out some of his input on this right here. But George, take off, man, go, go for it. All right, so uh, 1973 F100, this started out as a running driving truck. Um, just uh, everything on this truck is custom. It all took a lot of time and a lot of planning. Uh, me with the client, just going over different things, different things we both wanted to see coming to a common ground. So um, this is a custom powder coated fuel tank. It's got a Phantom dual pump in it. It'll support the power that the Whipple supercharger is making. We actually had two fuel tanks in the truck just to get the right look. It's got a 100% custom exhaust system. It's three inch from the headers all the way back. Custom X pipe, this truck does have cats, keeps it nice and quiet. Spin tech mufflers. So over here, Doug, it's 
from the side, we have, uh, you know, 13 inch Willwood brakes, four piston in the rear, got big ones in the front also. Got a custom coilover set up in the rear, all fully adjustable. This is a Mosier built nine inch rear end, so it's got the True Track carrier, Mosier axles. Everything's custom powder coated. Uh, again, just everything's custom. So, custom four link. We had the frame all the way down. We actually made boxing plates for the frame, so everything's boxed. Fully coated frame. Moving forward. I don't know, Doug, if you can see this, but we got QTP cutouts in there for when you want to get loud. Also, a custom aluminum drive shaft. Custom drive shaft loop. And moving forward, we got a big uh, AFE transmission pan that holds an extra four quarts of fluid, keeping everything cool. And then on the front side here, again, 14 inch Willwood, six piston calipers. We actually have the independent front suspension out of an 05 Crown Vic in this truck. So it brings it over to a rack and pinion steering, upper lower control arms. We got an adjustable upper control arm from Outcast Fabrications. Again, Ride Tech coilovers. Those are made for the Crown Vic front end. Uh, they're adjustable shocks, adjustable coilover, and they actually bolt right in. So that's pretty cool. And then up front here, this is uh, an air dam. We actually have the intercooler for the supercharger mounted in horizontally so the air comes in and actually shoots up through the inter intercooler so that's something pretty cool we had made custom and then on this side of the truck Doug uh, we got the custom forge line wheels these are three piece wheels uh, we had to take all the measurements and send them over to forge line to have them made we had specific offsets and stuff we wanted to see specific lips on the front and rear and we were able to achieve all that we actually had to have the rear end narrowed to achieve what we got in the rear here. This is a four and a half inch lip. And basically in 72, the rear end was a little bit narrower in the truck, but being a 73, we actually had to take an inch and a half out of each side of the rear end to be able to achieve that lip on the wheels. And then we've got Nitto drag radials on the back. Uh, the truck actually gets really good traction. And you know, something else on this truck right here is when you're building a custom truck like this, so I noticed from watching this being built and I see things going on and I know George is so focused on what's, you know, going on with this truck right here. But when you build a custom truck, sometimes we get it done and it's not exactly, you know, you send pictures of what the client wants. He's from Texas. We're in Indiana. And he's like, I thought this might look a little bit different. So we're willing to go back in and change it. We change the wheels, right? Just yep. the back or the front and the back? Just the back, yeah. We... Just the back. And Forge Line is awesome to work with. So we originally had these wheels built. Everyone was on the same page. But was it the lip? Yep, the lip. We just wanted to see a little bit more. We had about a three-inch lip. He was really hoping for a minimum of four. So again, being a 73, we had to get the rear end narrowed, and we were able to achieve that extra. Yeah, and that's cool. I mean, that was a great company to work with. You know, these wheels obviously are, you know, custom but they were willing to get them back, make some adjustments, make him happy, make us happy. Then we're all happy, they're happy. So that's not really good. And there's a lot of things on this truck that he'd request for, you know, even down to the Spintech mufflers, right? Like yep. these are mufflers he wanted. You know, we use a lot of different mufflers out there, but we will take the input from the client. And, you know, they, they want these wheels, they want these mufflers, they want whatever, maybe this cutouts, but we will do that. So I think what'd be a good thing to do right now is if you guys have gone over the, underneath the truck, we're going to bring it down. Let's take a little look at the interior. Yep. I already showed the engine compartment, which we're going to look at again. Let's bring it down, look at the interior, kind of talk about that a little bit. All and right, we... so now we're in the interior. This truck was pretty mint when it came in. You know, all the factory components worked and they were all there, so that was awesome. Uh, the, we ended up using the 2017 GT shifter and we integrated it in with a carpeted console to match the factory carpet that's something the client requested uh, we do have the select shift button here so you can put it in sport mode and shift up and down on your own which is pretty cool we used a vintage ac system and it actually uses factory controls we just have a little knob down here we turn when we want to make it cold and um, other than that doug why don't you come around and check out these dakota digital gauges but while you're at it check out the mini tubs we installed in the rear
All right, so I'm going to turn the key on so we can see these gauges light up. Dakota Digital is pretty awesome. They plug into the Ford Racing Control Pack. There's only a few sensors you have to get to make everything work. Uh, the fans are going to come on for the AFCO heat exchanger, so it might be a little noisy. But with the lights on, you can see we got the RPM gauge, speedo obviously, fuel, volts, oil pressure, temperature, all that stuff works. One thing really cool, Doug, is it actually shows you what gear you're in. So that's pretty awesome. And um, that's pretty much it for the interior. We should probably check out the engine bay. All right, before I get Dom talk a little bit, I want to ask him like what was awesome about building this, maybe what wasn't awesome. I want George to go over the engine compartment. I know I just told you, Gen 2 Coyote, Whipple Supercharge, oil pump gears, cooling mods, same thing as we do on Mustangs. There's way more going on underneath this hood than what I told you earlier. So George, you don't mind. Tell everyone a little bit what's going on underneath here. Yeah, uh, totally. Obviously the Whipple Gen 3, 2.9 liter, this has ID1300 injectors in it. We use the air motive fuel system, so it's got the air motive regulator, uh, fuel pressure gauge over there. It's got some cool Ford Racing camera covers on the coil covers there. Um, Doug, if you'll kind of zoom in on the plate back here, that was all custom made. It is removable. That hides all of our Gen 2 control pack components, the, the PCM, fuse box, all the wiring back there. So that's all actually installed behind that. Gives it a super clean look. Uh, we got a UPR oil separator over here, Canton coolant expansion tank, AFCO radiator, all good stuff. And a lot of you might wonder, you know, how do you power this? Like George just said, it's the Ford Performance Gen 2 control pack, all right? So it's designed for the 6R tranny, which I told you earlier, and it's designed for the Gen 2 Coyote. And of course, we had to calibrate it for the Whipple Supercharger, but that's the control pack in this. So this wasn't just a computer out of a wrecked car. It's a Ford Performance Control Pack, which we love those. We use them all the time. They work good. They're actually really easy to wire, but there's a lot of wiring, but they're, it's completely hidden. So, Doug, one more look at this engine compartment before I bring Dom over here. There is so much going on in here, but when you look at it, it doesn't look like there's that much going on. It's so clean. One of my favorite things about this truck. So, there you have it right there. I'm going to grab Dom. We are going to look at... A wide open throttle pull in the driveway. He didn't know that yet. I'm mean, gonna put the wheel back on. We're gonna go out there and do a quick rip in the driveway. And then thanks, George, for showing everyone yeah, this. Yeah, you got it. Appreciate it. You can get back to work. Yep. Okay, I'm gonna grab Don. Let's get going. Mm -hmm. All right, I have Don with me here. He's the master builder on this badass truck. So I'm gonna ask him a couple questions. He might be a little like surprised. I'm gonna ask him about Dom. On this truck right here, what do you think was the hardest thing when you were building it to build? I would say probably the hardest or most challenging thing was uh, when we had it down to the frame, making sure the frame stayed straight and keeping all the K-member and the four link in the back lined up so that the truck would drive straight down the road and be aligned. So basically is what he's saying is we had this thing down to the frame, so you had to put the K-member in, you had to do the rear end, everything, and you want it to be perfectly aligned, which we did. We had it aligned when we're finished, mm -hmm. everything came out great, so that was one of the hardest. Now, what would be one of the things you thought was going to be the hardest, but actually turned out to be easier than you thought? Uh, probably the wiring when we started this, knowing what all was going to be added to this truck, um, having an idea of where I was going to hide all the wires and how to make everything nice and neat. I figured that was going to be a challenge, but it really fell together really nice. Um, and everything, as you can see, is nice and hidden away. So. Now, Dom, you built conversions where this has a Ford Racing Control Pack, mm -hmm. which I guarantee made your life a lot easier. Very You've much. done conversions where we actually use harnesses out of wrecked cars, and that's way harder, is that correct? Yeah, there's just a lot more things that you have to keep grounded and hooked up. This just simplifies everything by only including what you need. Awesome, so that's Dom right there. Dom built this truck. He's gonna put the wheels back on it. We're gonna take it out. I'm gonna make him do like a burnout, maybe a power break, I don't know. But let's go. Cool? Sounds good. We're good. Hey, thanks for watching this video. I know it was really long. We stuck around at the very end of this. You must really be in the F100s. I got Dom out here. We're going to do a burnout. Dom, check it out. <laughs> Dude, that truck is sick. It's so fast on the street. It came out really good. 
Hey, if you have any questions, leave a comment, happy to answer. Thanks for watching. Don't forget, subscribe and notify.